Hello guys and welcome to the week 5 of financial data analysis course and in this video I will tell you about the use cases of machine learning in financial data analysis that how we can utilize the machine learning in financial domain and what are the use cases what are the most important algorithms that we can be used so let's start with the uh, basic introduction of machine learning in finance domain so machine learning in finance domain is all about the decision making processes it involves that train the machine learning models from the past historical data and make the prediction or the forecasting or decisions without any explicit programming just basic on the machine learning only okay so in finance domain with the help of machine learning you can do predictive insights automate tasks like uh, fraud detection risk assessment portfolio management you can also use the supervised machine learning to train the label data to predict the future of the stock prices or any kind of portfolio or you can also use the unsupervised machine learning to discover the patterns in your unlabeled data and do the customer segmentation personalized recommendations as well and also you can utilize the feature engineering and the pre-processing to clean normalize and transform your uh, raw data into some meaningful information you can also do the sentiment analysis on the financial news and also to enhance your uh, predict stock price uh, predictions because stock price is basically on the sentiment of the people so if the people sentiment is positive the stock will go up as stock will go down okay so in our next section we will talk about the supervised machine learning use cases so the best algorithms used in the finance domain in supervised machine learning base is the linear regression decision trees and random forest because these algorithms will give you the explainability as well because in the finance domain if we want to make decisions on the base of data by using machine learning we need explainable algorithms that are not very much complex these three algorithms are not very much complex but also useful in the finance domain so the linear regression take the independent variables and that dependent variables and very useful in predicting the stock prices is those are gone in the linear fashion and for the non linear data you have decision trees you have random forest and for the decision tree you just a single tree that work on the task of classification and regression and random forest are the bag of multiple decision trees that, that are used to improve the accuracy of one single decision trees and can help you get the more out of your financial data okay so let's just take an example and uh, we here like i have imported all the necessary libraries and all the necessary algorithms here and then build a small data frame here with the two features and one target variable and i just split the data into my uh, independent and the dependent features and then again split it into the training and test data sets and then i will fit my data on the linear regression model and on the decision tree regression model and the random forest regression model and then when i compare the performances of these three models on this same data by using the mean squared error so in the linear regression the mean squared error is 0 and in the decision tree the mean squared error is 100 and in the random forest mean squared error is 10.2 so in that way you will get to know that how you can apply these three algorithms on your financial data in the real world this financial data will have more columns as well you will have to do the more feature engineering as well and do the encoding that i already teach you in the past videos you can just check out the video links of the data cleaning and feature engineering in this video description or in the i button okay so the next top topic is about the use cases of unsupervised machine learning Unsupervised machine learning uh, are like uh, clustering or uh, dimensionality reductions are there. By using clustering, you can have your unlabeled data, which makes no sense. But you are trying to find the patterns in that unlabeled data that can be used for customer seg segmentation, stock segmentation, or personalized recommendation to the customers as well. And then we have dimensionality reduction. The suppose you have like data which contains many features and many columns as well. And you want to uh, uh, take only those columns which are very useful for your whole uh, project. So in that way, you can use the dimensionality reduction techniques like PCA. 
so these te- 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 techniques will make your data transform into the more useful co- columns as well that you can use in the clustering algorithms let me just take an example let's say we have these two features here and we want to implement the k means clustering algorithms on them and here i implement the k means clustering here but when i implement the k means clustering here and then i try to build a plot out of it my plot just look, looks like this it is a multi dimensional plot because it is a two feature plot like 2d plot but when i take it with the help of pca and make my data into only one dimension it just look like this it is a one dimensional data so that's how you can understand the importance of dimension reduction it just reduce the dimensions of data as much as you required so i just convert the dimension to dimension 1 by taking the n components as one okay so in that way you can use the dimension reduction our next technique is model evaluation session so whenever you are trying to choose any kind of model building machine learning project the model evaluation techniques are the most crucial technique because you want to evaluate your model on the new t- data because otherwise your mo- model will be overfitting or underfitting as well so first technique is cross validation you can assess your model performance on different subsets of the new data that can ha- helps you to evaluate your model as well then you can do the hyperparameter tuning as well that hyperparameter tuning will also help you to uh increase the accuracy precision or recall or all about your machine learning model and you can also compare the different different kind of machine learning models on your data let's say you have a regression problem and you want to see that which algorithm will work best so in in this way we can try to use many kind of regression models like linear regression random forest regression decision tree regression executive regression and then compare the matrices of those or regression models and choose the best in that way okay so let let's just say i have all these kind of uh, data with me and try to build the logistic regression model here and then random forest model here then then i try to check for the evaluation and for that evaluation and then for that cross validation and you see the logistic regression accuracy is zero random forest accuracy is zero tweak my data a little bit i can get at least 50% accuracy because my data just look like this so that's why it is like that okay so that means the cross validation just gives you the mean accuracy of your machine learning model at that okay and uh, then let's do our project so in this uh, project i will just take this historical data of the stock that i have here and try to predict the stock price with the help of machine learning model with the help of random forest classifier i want to predict whether my stock will go up or stock will go down okay i will take the p processing and drop all the nan values here and then take into the x and y columns and test train split and then build the random forest classifier model here and then check the accuracy accuracy is 100% that means it is able to predict each and every move about this data and if i can give him the new data it can also predict the well as well okay so this is this is how your complete uh, machine learning in the financial domain works so if you want to know more about this you can comment down your issues comment down your problems i will surely take it and build a video on that all right guys so thank you so much we'll meet in the next next video uh, in which we talk about the uses of deep learning in the finance domain and guys thank you so much